So I'd like to formally introduce you to the people on the Telesummit. I'm so excited that you've become that you're a speaker on My conscious. Pleasure. Conscious Visionary Nurse Leaders on the Edge of Evolution. So I'd like to introduce you to everyone so they have a sense of, so not, not I don't know if everyone knows you, but in case they don't, I want to be clear. To, I want to let everybody know who you are. So this is um, Richard Riccardi. Is that, how do you say your last name? Riccardi's fine. It could, oh, you, can, you can say it that way. That's fine. Thanks. Okay, okay. He's a professor and director of Strategic Partners partnerships at the Center of Health Policy and Media Engagement at the George Washington University School of Nursing. And prior to that, he was the director of the Vision of Practice Improvement and Senior Advisor for, the, for Nursing at the Agency of Healthcare Research and Quality. And quality. quality. He also served in the military for 30 years in the Army where he had number, uh, many, many different positions, from a pediatric and family nurse practitioner to a clinical science, scientist and a senior, a senior leader. And I'm so excited. He served many, many positions. And at this point, he is the current president of Sigma Theta Tau International. And I'm so excited that you're here speaking to us because you are definitely one of the leaders in nursing today. And I'm really, I, I came to this idea with this telesummit because I was celebrating, wanted to celebrate the 2020 decade of the nurse and midwife and how we can, at this point in time, at this decade that we're celebrating, how can we throw the road out in front of us and what can we possibly look with our vision, with our visionary leaders, what are the possibilities and potentials to activate the future of nursing and where we need to be going? Mm -hmm. I wanted to get your ideas. I'm, I'm happy to share ideas with you, uh, collaborate and learn from your uh, interviews and hear what other individuals are, are, are saying and thinking about um, because there's just so much out there to think about and to put into some sort of framework to think about how we can build on what we've done and accomplished in the past, not only celebrating all the wonderful nurses and healthcare professionals that have come before us to uh, provide us with where the science is, where the healthcare delivery is, where the policies are, uh, but also to think about where we've been and where we wanna go, which exactly. is, uh, as many people are thinking about now globally about where healthcare is and how can we improve healthcare and the delivery of healthcare uh, at the point of care to really meet the needs of the populations that we serve? No small task. <laughs> no small task. So if we had all the possibilities and potential of the future, what do you think would be one of our, something to strive for? Wow. I mean, if I had everything, what yeah. I would strive for would be a degree of a shared mental model or harmony amongst all the health professions, amongst the scientists, amongst the people that we serve and the policymakers to come up with some really innovative thinking about what we can all agree on. Yes. What do we see are some of the more important touch points in the delivery of healthcare, in the receiving of healthcare, and in how healthcare fits into the broader perspective of markets, economies. So if, if I had a, a crystal ball and I had everything I need, I would work on uh, the interprofessional perspective and bringing all of individuals that are key stakeholders in healthcare, which of course nurses are one of the main key stakeholders, but yeah. we don't work in isolation. We don't work in a box. We can't get uh, what, you know, some of our goals and where we uh, think healthcare should go without, you know, working with others. So if I had, uh, you know, all the resources in the world and all the goodwill in the world that, you know, for people who really wanted to make this work, uh, I would like for us to have some common themes, some uh, common goals and some sh a shared mental model on how we proceed both at the community level, because respective of what our global perspectives are, right. much happens at the community level in terms of health and well-being. But there are some common themes across all communities. 
that we can work on in solidarity to, you know, make it happen. So that so, would be so my dream. That would be a great dream. So as a starting point, and as a nurse, what would be some of the themes that you think would be important to bring up to that inter, you know, that group? Yeah. As we come together, yeah. what would some of the themes that you see as priority? Well, I, I think that there's a number of priorities. Perhaps not one is any more important than mm -hmm. the other. And they often are working simultaneously yeah. together. Um, so I think to start, probably the biggest pri priority is to uh, have self-awareness of where you are and who you are. Mm -hmm. and have an understanding of the science of nursing, the science of healthcare, and also what are your values? What is your purpose as an individual? Mm -hmm. what, are, you know, what is it that you see yourself and where you fit in? And how can, you know, how can you really dream that dream for you at an individual level? So for example, you know, what, a, what is your purpose? And, uh, uh, what is your moral compass? You know, what, what drives you as an individual? And I think you have to start there with yourself, with some self-reflection, understanding, and really trying to move away from feeling uh, uh, disconnected. Because many, right now we know in healthcare, many of us are working uh, at a very high op tempo. We are, uh, have, uh, many, many challenges around working with individuals that have many comorbidities, the aging of the population. And now, of course, we're facing a COVID crisis globally. And there are repercussions from that, you know, in terms of a profession that deals with both science and humanity. And in, in being in touch with the humanity and the human side of care delivery requires for you to have that awareness on an individual level. So I think the first place to start is with yourself. Then uh, simultaneously looking at what your purpose is. And for my purpose, it's always about thinking about how can I collaborate with other like-minded people or perhaps not like-minded people that I want to find out other perspectives on to come together where the, the, you know, the whole or the idea or the shared mental model is greater than the sum of its parts. How do we come together, collaborate, uh, develop coalitions or working groups that have much more meaning, much more influence, much more impact than we can as an individual? So once you, kind of, once you know where you stand as an individual, right. how do I develop those coalitions, those collaborations, perhaps working with professional organizations, whether they're state-based, national based or global like Sigma, which is a global organization. How do I utilize my skills for the greater good amongst people who have a shared mental model like myself? So moving forward, I think we have to look at how do we co-create? And the last piece of that would be, how do we co-create? How do we come together as nurses, as physicians, as health professionals, as policymakers, as academicians, as in, in, in co-creating what our future could look like together. That's amazing. So, so I think self-awareness, creating coalitions and co-creation. Right, and I think it's, and those are all happening simultaneously in my mind. Right. And, and so even though you may have, uh, let's say for example, you're working with your local community on finding ways to increase the amount of personal protective equipment you have right. you know, at your hospital or in your community. So you form a group of individuals that understand, okay, what equipment do we need? How, and how do we find out how, how to get to the logistics of resourcing that equipment? How do we find out how to order it, how to get it, where the sources are? How do we procure it? So right. getting the right people that know how to procure equipment as part of our team and finding out where the, where the gaps are in our community, who needs it the most, where are the risk points and how can we, this can all be done at the local level, you know, yeah. and nurses are involved, you know, and then bringing that up to perhaps the state level 
and then being involved with governments and the procurement that governments are doing to look for PPE. And that's just one example that I'm using PPE, personal protective equipment, because that's on everybody's mind right now. Exactly. How do you see nurses moving into those positions and being part of those teams that are making those decisions? How do we get move ourselves into those coalitions? Do we create them ourselves or do we join coalitions that are, how do we get in, involved in, at the table to make those decisions and make and co-create? You know, that's a great question. And I think it depends on where you're at in, mm -hmm. in you know, in the event or what's happening. Mm -hmm. But certainly there's been many examples of nurses uh, starting coalitions and getting involved at the local level, whether it's for full practice authority in the U.S. and looking right. ways to move that legislation or whether it's for specific uh, things in their community around home health care or, you know, whatever, or whether it's uh, around the concept of pain management and the whole uh, right. concerns around overprescribing of opioids and what other kinds of uh, multimodal modalities are available for, mm -hmm. for pain management. Those uh, perhaps can start with nurses starting a coalition or right. joining coalitions. Right. You know, I have a favorite. I grew up in New York City. And I, I'm very proud of that. I love New York. It's a great place. My parents were immigrants. You know, I'm, you know, I'm so proud of, of New York and New Yorkers. And there was, a, there was a politician named Shirley Chisholm from New York. I don't know if you recognize her name, but she was the first person of color to run, first female person of color to run for president of the United States. Really? And she was a congresswoman from New York. Uh, and, and she had great sayings. And she said, you know, if you're not invited at the table, you just pull up with the folding chair. And, <laughs> and I'd always love that. She's, you just bring your folding chair and you pull up to the table and you sit down. And I, I, I always thought that's a great, um, that's, a, that's a, such a, a great way of thinking for nurses because as you're right, we are the largest healthcare profession. And we are often not invited for a number of reasons, although that is improving over the years and we're getting more invitations and we're getting seen as the leaders that we are. But in, in any event, if you're not invited, don't let that stop you. Just bring your folding chair and sit down and, you know. And <laughs> I agree, I love that, I love that. So do I, yeah. Be prepared, obviously. You don't wanna to go to and, you know, and bring your folding chair if you're not prepared, knowing, you know, knowing what, what's gonna be spoken about what some of the uh, evidence and data is. And so that when you do contribute, you're contributing at a high level and a meaningful level that represents nursing very well. So I'm saying this casually, but being prepared to go to these meetings is not a casual event. And I think that's part of self-awareness, knowing where you're at and what your skills are and where your gaps are in your knowledge and, you know, and filling those gaps so that you can come and be prepared for the co-creation aspects of, of you know, driving healthcare where it needs to go. So tell me about self-awareness. What is, when you say that, I think that's a very, that is a really powerful dimension that we can create in our professional roles, in self-awareness and knowing who we are and what we have to give and being prepared to give it. Can you speak to that a little bit more? Because that really intrigues me. Yeah, you know, I put a lot of thought into this because uh, when I became president of, of Sigma, uh, I typically the president of Sigma has some form of a call to action over the two years that you're president. And uh, I, I was a, I'm a practicing clinician. I still practice, and that keeps me self-aware. Right. Um, I work in a, uh, a underserved, for underserved populations, I work in a community-based health clinic as a nurse practitioner for uninsured individuals. Okay. Most of them are undocumented, uninsured individuals that have nowhere to go to get their health care. Um, so that keeps me grounded to yeah. what my roots in nursing are serving. And, and, but I also have to keep my skills up. That's right. part of self-awareness. You have to keep abreast of the science. You have to know what the latest evidence is and what the, you know, the, most current treatments are for, you know, the typical primary care kinds of conditions. Right. Keeps you in the game, if you will. Mm -hmm. And then 
being self-aware and having mastery of your craft, which is something that I really believe, provides you with confidence. It provides you with a sense of, I'm in the game, I'm confident, I, I know where I stand. And, but it doesn't mean that you know everything and that you're, you know, you're, you're, uh, uh, there aren't things that you need help with. But it does give you a basis so that you are truly uh, autonomous in a way. And I don't really like the concept of autonomy in, in clinical care because we all practice together. Right. But uh, from a self-awareness perspective, you have the confidence. So at the end of the day, you feel good about what you did because the decisions that you made are on you. Right. And that you have, you have the authority to make those decisions. And that provides you with a sense at the end of the day that you have contributed to someone's health or some aspect of something that's greater than you in a positive way. And that keeps your joy. Yes. So my call to action is, is the title of it is infused joy. Because okay. I feel at a time right now where we're at a cusp right now where individuals are very much uh, challenged by all the burden of work. And, you know, how do we become self-aware? How do we take care of ourselves? How do we maintain balance and purpose in our lives? And how do we co-create at a systems level an environment that will allow for a culture of, of joy, which is, you know, it can't, it has to happen at all these levels in order for us to be successful. And that's what leaders need to do. Mm -hmm. They need to be aware of not only the individual level and what's happening out, you know, in the practice settings, whether it's an acute care setting, right. a hospital-based, a long-term care setting, which, you know, obviously are really challenged now with COVID. You hear some really sad stories in long-term care centers where, you know, COVID is just, unfortunately, is, is running wild and it's hard to control. Uh, so how do we deal with that? and also in the primary and ambulatory settings. So that's what, that's what keeps me going. It keeps me uh, looking for ways to make improvement. And why not with nurses? I mean, nursing is the most incredible profession. It is. I mean, they're really, I, you know, I don't know of anyone better, any better profession than nursing. It really is. How do you blend science, creativity, research, and administration and running, you know, healthcare systems and touch, human touch and being engaged with the humanity, seeing people at the most exciting and vigorous times of their lives and also seeing them at some of the most challenging times of their lives and having to, to you know, to work with that. I mean, I, you know, uh, Don Berwick used to have uh, an expression um, that, we are invited into the lives of our patients. We should see ourselves as individuals who are invited into their lives. And I think that's one good way to look at it. That's a beautiful way to look at it. We are invited. We sort of are the, the guest that walks in the door and we're there invited to be with them during these times of their lives that are, you know, remarkable for them. And we're, we're given the, the privilege of being there for them. Right, and it's how do we contribute to the greater good of them and the greater good of all of our common man and populations in a way that we only nurses can. We have certain skills and certain abilities that no one else has. I know. And they're so needed. So needed. So how, it's because you just said that, how can we inspire ourselves with our self-awareness, with this agenda to create coalitions and co-create the future? How do we like, I, I wanna reach and I wanna reach and inspire us to stand in this moment and look forward and take even a couple baby steps in that direction. Mm -hmm. Can you, you know, and you talked about the joy, you talk about, cause that gives us so much energy you know, joy is like enthusiasm. It energizes us to move forward in the, in the, into the future, giving what we give, doing what we do that is so unique and so essential for the future. Can you speak to that? Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I have, I, you know, I think about this a lot because I, I think one of the things, because I'm also an educator, you know, at George Washington University. And 
I'm inspired by students, but I also feel like as an educator, part of my role is to try to inspire students as well. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not inspired by them, I, I don't think I'm going to have much of a chance of inspiring them. Mm -hmm. So I think that we need to really be aware. And, you know, I, I think part of that is, is, is really thinking about how, what goes on in a day that you miss that you can have gratitude for. Because a lot of it stems back to a sense of having gratitude. I mean, we're obviously so blessed in the United States when you look at many other countries. If we just took a step back and had a reflective practice, even for five or 10 minutes a day, if we took a step back and reflected and thought about all of the things that happen in our day that we should be thankful for. And look at today in the, in the era of COVID, people that bring us our food, you know, people that are bringing us our mail, you know, individuals that are stocking the food in the grocery stores that are putting themselves at risk. You know, there's so many people that have been involved to, for us. They're doing it for us. So if we were to take that perspective and think about that, I also have another little saying that, I, that helps me. It's don't limit your challenges, challenge your limits. Don't limit your challenges. Challenge your limits. Challenge your limits. Okay, tell so me. keep an open mind. Be open to serendipity and what comes along. My career is just full of being open and serendipitous experiences where I've kept an open mind and not limited myself and say, you know, I could never do that. You know, well, perhaps I could. And how would I ever know unless I tried? Right. And just like this interview with you, there's a fair amount of stress there, putting myself out there, sharing my ideas. I'm like, well, who cares about my ideas? Who really, who really cares about my ideas? You know, and you do. So that I gives do. me something to be grateful for. She really does care. She's smiling at me. She's, she's actively engaged with me, even though I'm virtually talking to you. I feel like I'm in the room with you. I, it, you know, so I'm grateful for that. So I'm going to go with it. I'm going to try it. I'm going to see where this goes. And so <laughs> having a different perspective, being open and, and, you know, don't limit your challenges, challenge your limits. I love that. I love that because that really, that opens us up for, I don't know, for me, what comes up for me is one of the things about doing the telesummit. It's like, I'm going to do this telesummit and it has been truly the most inspiring experience for me to listen to people and feel the authentic their ideas and their energy like just feeling your energy in this moment in time is so inspiring for me i want to do what i can to have you re be able to touch so many more people's lives with your presence with your words with your leadership and what you have to say because i feel like now in in this time of the internet, which I'm not really that great at, this is our vehicle for transformation. This is our vehicle for out for reaching out and challenge your limits. Is that what you said? Yeah, don't limit your challenges. Challenge your limits. Oh, that's good because I'm challenging my limits. <laughs> Doing this. <laughs> we all should be. Now I definitely wanna, am. You <laughs> want to do it in a spirit of curiosity. Because yes. I think one of the reasons I feel joy is so important and why the bottom line, if someone asks me, what's the main point of you focusing on joy and practice and being, you know, being involved in, in awareness, uh, balance and purpose and co-creation. It's really about what we're dealing with now is a healthcare enterprise that is so complicated. It's what we call a wicked problem. Yeah. And the only way to solve wicked problems is by being innovative and the only way, in my opinion, to be innovative is that you have to have a curious mind. You have to always be wondering about why am I doing things this way and what's happening and how can I do things better and asking questions. Being, and when you're depressed or, or somewhat uh, uh, complacent in what you do, yeah. Yeah. you don't ask questions. You just go along at a status quo and, and that is not going to get us there. It's just not going to get us there. 
Um, and I feel that nursing is one of the most curious professions or should be one of the most curious professions because we're dealing with science and we have a whole series of scientific questions that we have. Right. But we're dealing face to face with people and yeah. we need to be curious about our the patients or the consumers that we serve. Who are they? What are they about? What are the, what are the contexts in the situations about what they live in? We need to help them to um, uh, navigate through this very complex healthcare system. Mm -hmm. And the only way we can do that is for us to get to know them on a personal level. And if we're not curious, we won't get to know them on a personal level. Just like we won't get to know if we're in an ICU and we're working with technology, if we're not curious about the technology and how it works and how it can right. be improved, we're not going to improve it. So curiosity is really, that, I love that, that's key. That's a whole different concept that I, you know, in, in speaking to you that just you bring it up because I think curiosity is such a, a key, a key, a key mindset to be curious, to find out who these people are and also your concept of self-awareness. Like who are we? And how right. are we aware of ourselves? And how do we present ourselves? And what do we, being prepared, being prepared to be out there and make a difference and bring up your folding chair to the tables in the future. I mean, those are very important suggestions that are very grounded and very specific and very doable. Right. No, I'm a practical person. You know, I, I, that's why I still practice and, and, you know, see patients in primary care clinics. It keeps me grounded. That's part of my self-awareness. I'm not saying everyone needs to do that. Right. But for me, it works for me. Exactly. It keeps me grounded in nursing and my self-awareness. It also keeps me, I'm a very practical person. I, I you know, I, I, even though I, I love strategy, and here's another quote that I love. Um, strategy without action is an hallucination. <laughs> So <laughs> say that again. That's great. Strategy without action is an hallucination. <laughs> so even though I am a leader and very much I'm in strategy, like, you know, I'm the president of Sigma and I'm not, I'm not interested in how to operationalize. I have a CEO and a whole, you know, staff that can operationalize where I think we should go strategically. So from my perspective, you're gonna be wearing different hats. Right. When I'm president of Sigma, I'm really thinking about strategy and the board of directors. How are we taking in what's happening in our environment around us, strategizing the organization so that well, we're well positioned to be successful. Operationalizing that, which is the action, right. in order to fulfill the activity. So if I don't have a team, a CEO, and a team of individuals that are going to take that strategy and operationalize it and actionalize it, then it's an hallucination on my part. Nothing's going to happen. So I, I think that we as nurses are very good at um, action mm -hmm. and, you know, fulfilling what the action is. And we're, we're really evolving and learning to be much more strategic. I, when, in my 40 years of nursing, I've just seen the profession develop exponentially where we have so many great leaders now who can think strategically but understand that strategy without action is an hallucination that it can't just be about you know putting together a great report and then putting that report in you know on a bookshelf and nothing ever materializes from it that's not going to get us there it just doesn't well i must admit that your your um action you know in it was called infused joy correct i have felt that happening in nursing without really knowing i just feel that the, i mean that that declaration of joy and making that move forward in our profession i feel there's been an uplifting of that energy just because you made that intention i i was i that was my hope that was my strategy whether my strategy becomes to fulfillment, now I'm getting reinforced that there's actually action taking place. And it's not, and for me, it's not an hallucination. Reality is really happening here. And that of course makes, just uplifts me 
and, and gives me, and I'm so, gra I'm so grateful that you said that and, and I have so much gratitude because I feel like uh, uh, something that I feel could be a benefit to the greater good is actually being perceived by some individuals. Obviously the uptake is never gonna be 100%, but by some individuals to make them better nurses, perhaps better people in general, and more balanced and, and really have a purpose. That was my intent, that was my strategy, but you often don't know, you know, you can only be hopeful that your strategy will be take action and move forward, which is- Well, it has, because at the College of Nursing at the University of Florida, our dean has a little button and it says, choose joy. Okay, wonderful. And that, you know, that is a great moment. You know, choose joy. And you realize it's a choice. It's it an intention. It's something we can create. And it's, to me, it changes everything from how you speak, how you present yourself, just knowing that that is a fundamental value that we wanna maintain because what it creates is connection, meaningful connection with each other. Mm -hmm. Well, the Sigma vision, which we put together is, um, is, I like to do it this way, connected. Connected. Empowered. Empowered. Nurses. Nurses. Transforming global healthcare. I love it. I love it. So we have to be connected. Yes. And we have to be empowered. Yes. And then that gives us the strength to move forward to transform global healthcare. That is fantastic. Well, thank you. Thank you for the journey that you've taken in nursing and that you are sitting and standing right where you are. I couldn't be more excited meeting you and talking to you and listening to you. And I wanna do everything in my power to send your message out into the world. And thank you so much. I appreciate what you've done and who you are as a nurse leader. No, thank you very much. I appreciate this opportunity. It was wonderful to meet you and infuse joy. I will, thank you right. so much. All right, be Take well. Care. Take care, bye. Take care, bye.